Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam. Ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'da habitatillah. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Your environment that you put yourself in is, is very important uh, to be, it's very important to be in a halal environment. And not just a halal environment, but I would say also in an environment which is going to be low fitna, low, uh, as far as minimal distractions. And what comes to mind is the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam where he says in the dunya halwata khadira wa inna allaha subhanahu mustakhlifukum fi falyandur kayfa ta'amalun fattaqu dunya wa taqu nisa uh, the Prophet Sallallahu said, Verily this world is like a beautiful garden. And verily Allah establishes you therein. You know, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala has made us uh, Khalifa and successors and you could say almost like leaders and watchers over this dunya. We're caretakers. We're caretakers of the environment even. For in the law, mustakhlif akum fi. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishes us in it. And guess what? For the under kayfa ta'amaloon. And then he looks to see what we will do. So while we're here in this dunya, while we're here enjoying this worldly life, for the under kayfa ta'amaloon, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks to see. How we're operating here, how, how we're interacting in this environment. What are we doing in this environment? Are we being halal? Are we being haram? Uh, in, involving ourselves in the muharramat? For the under kayfa ta'amaloon. How are, what, you know, he's looking to see what you do. And then the Prophet said, Fataku dunya wa taku nisa. He said, So fear this worldly life and fear the nisa. You know, basically put yourself in a halal situation. Do things to prohibit you from indulging in the muharramat. Putting a waqaya, as some of the scholars mentioned the concept of taqwa, is like putting a, you're putting up a waqaya, like a barrier between you and the hellfire. So for example, when we're out in the public, and we're in a mixed environment, which is most of the earth, if not 90 something percent of it. Then you want to also try to make a waqaya. You're gonna be in environments. Maybe you go to certain parks and it's very crowded and there's people, especially now, even when you wanna to try to get away, you're not in the mall, but you go to parks and there's a lot of women that are uh, dressed uh, in shorts, skirts, whatever. So. The one who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more so, maybe altogether they will avoid those places. And the one who is maybe sees a maslaha for themselves might go into those environments, but at least they're lowering their gaze and they're trying to prevent themselves from being in, in uh, harm's way as far as their religion. And so people have different grades of iman, different levels of iman, different levels of taqwa, and different levels of interacting with their surroundings. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks to see how we will do. He looks to see what you will do. And so, so fear the dunya, you know. Put a waqaya between yourself and the hellfire when it comes to the dunya. Because the dunya can deceive you, you know, the acquisition of wealth. We all want wealth, we all need wealth, okay? Some people are spiritual is favored with a lot of wealth, some people not the case. And wealth can be a huge, huge fitna. And it can cause you to do haram. It can it cause you it can cause you to engage in all kinds of activities which are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or compromising your religion. But dunya. 
So be careful of that dunya. Don't let it uh, don't let it destroy you and destroy your deen. Watakunisa and the women as well. So a lot of questions, a lot of times we get questions about people who want to uh, work out in mixed gyms and things like this. And we've talked about it prior to this. And even given 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 some fatawa from some of the scholars about the impermissibility. Okay. Obviously, this issue also needs some dressa from the point of living in the West because it's not like living in uh, uh, some of those Muslim countries where you have segregation, which is still very slim, becoming less so less the case. So, for the scholars to look into those masail because there is a need to be fit, there is a need to get swole. Uh, and it has a lot of benefits, and I'm not going to talk about it right here. But no doubt, getting swole is uh, it's it becomes uh, it's very important. And I can talk to anybody who wants to talk about it in other conversations. We can do so. And so the point is, is when you put yourself in that environment, you already know that there's going to be fitna. So the one who fears Allah subhanahu wa taala more, they're not going to do that. And the one who has less, or Whatever the case may be, they're going to be putting themselves in a greater harm's way. So this is what you have to uh, acknowledge and recognize the dangers of what you can encounter in this life. And that you, as a Muslim, we try to at least seek a khafa the the lesser of the two evils. For example, if you're faced with two harms or something, maybe it's the harm of... Uh, being sick if you stayed indoors all the time you're not you're not living a healthy lifestyle obesity because these are real realities that happen uh, obesity and just being out of shape and not being able to you know uh, do your ibadah properly because you're obese you have to sit in a chair and you're in your 20s or 30s you know that's really not shouldn't be a, an acceptable thing unless it's out of your control and you know, if you were faced between that and actually going outside and enjoying the environment, for example, like here, okay? Even here, sometimes we, we run into women that are in shorts, bikinis, sometimes they want to swim and they're going to sunbathe. So what do you do? Do you just stay indoors or do you try to stay away from that fitna? Go to another place. You see it and you move on. You move on to deal with those harms. So this is just some things for us to reflect on, to gain insight on and to practice as far as being practical in our Islam. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal the Almighty to accept our good and fear of our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam, Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.